My name is Dr. Michael Brown, and this is Three Words, a bite-sized podcast about the simple, strategic, and today, extremely significant choices in order to become not only the very best version of yourself, but to feel fully alive. I am almost speechless as I talk about today's episode because my friend Greg Jenkins just took a spear to my heart as he talked about three really provocative words, which is to rethink social media. In many ways, you are here in this space probably because of social media for many of you. And our conversation today went from rethinking social media to even a more extreme approach and you will not want to miss this episode. I said very few words and just soaked in all of Greg's wisdom and insight. Listen in. My friend Greg Jenkins here in the Three Words Podcast Studio, only your second podcast episode ever with three words, the first of which was progress over perfection, and today is gonna be a very different twist than that. But first, obviously, not everyone knows who you are. I know who you are, but for our listeners, for our viewers, we're like, who's Greg Jenkins? Tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Greg Jenkins. I work as a web developer in my day job. Uh, I'm a worship leader. I'm a father. Uh, I'm a husband. And I'm part of the DMB coaching team, doing a lot behind the scenes, um, doing a lot of design, building the website, things like that. Well, and you have been with me from the very beginning of the uh, incarnation, if I can use that word, of DMB coaching. In fact, we sat in your backyard and dreamed this all up, and you are a true partner and a friend. And um, as we were joking about, even off camera, we've been working you really hard. Obviously, you're the father of uh, how many children now? Three. And the youngest is? Two months. Two months. So as you're being a dad of two months, here's another project. Work on this. Because you are. You are the designer. You have built so much behind the scenes of what people see when they think of Three Words Podcast. And yet in the midst of all of that, you are suggesting to our viewers, to our listeners, these three words for their consideration. Rethink social media. (laughs) <laughs> rethink social media, which is ironic, Greg, because it is likely that many of our listeners and viewers, even as they're sitting here now, came through social media, clicked a link through social media to listen to this particular podcast episode today. So my friend, why is this so important to you? Well, Michael, I maybe three coming up on four years ago now, um, not only took a step away from from all social media and didn't look back, but also dropped my smartphone and and made a handful of decisions in my life to intentionally limit uh, the use of technology in my life. As you mentioned, there's some irony there as my role of senior web developer at at a national web development agency doesn't feel like it's really cohesive with that choice. Um, But what you'll see is that the closer people are to the world of digital technology, social media, the more prone they are to themselves begin to distance Mm -hmm. themselves. Think of the friend that works at McDonald's who (laughs) swears they're never going to eat at McDonald's again. So this is important to me because of this life experiment that I decided to do a handful of years ago. It was never meant to be permanent. It was meant to be a step back to see how it felt to not be on social media and to not have a smartphone and, and to kind of what you might call take a step into digital minimalism. And I've never looked back and and I never will because of the profound effects it's had on my soul, on my mind and my heart. So there are many of us who are listening to this podcast, but there are others on YouTube who are watching this podcast. Can you, can you show us for those who might be um, this phone that Greg uses? I mean, it's just... (laughs) That's the phone. So talk to me about the phone. The phone does not take pic- it does not take pictures. No. It can't receive pictures. That's right. It does receive text messages. Yeah. And you can make phone calls. That's yeah. Um now I notice when I make a phone call though, your voice <laughs> mailbox is full on purpose. Right. <laughs> talk to me about this phone and what that in and of itself has done for you. Yeah, that could be a whole conversation. We'll keep it keep it short, but um you know there's a stat out there that that most people that have a smartphone will touch the screen 2,617 times a day. And if you do the math, it's might as well be a, about a million times a year that you that you touch you, that you interact with your phone. When I stopped using a smartphone, I would take this trinket toy of a phone out of my pocket just as many times as I did because 
I had treated my phone for so long as another appendage and almost this part of my mind that I could outsource information to or whatever. So I was so reliant on it that even though this phone doesn't do anything, it was about a month of detox before I stopped taking it out every time I was waiting in line or every time I was sitting in traffic or every time I was bored, I would still take it out. I would look at it. I go, Oh, this can't do anything for me. And I would put it away. And again, you know, as the months rolled on a clarity in my mind started to, uh, to, to crystallize. And, and I got some of myself back, uh, mm. which maybe sounds a little bit like an over exaggeration, but to, to the people who are feeling depressed, anxious, losing sleep and don't have enough time. Um, my advice to you would be rethink social media and, and look at the space it occupies in your schedule, maybe in a hidden way. Right. So social media is never a thing that you've written down on your detailed planner and your agenda. Check social media for this long. Or maybe it is. Maybe you're more disciplined than most. But for most people, those hours and those minutes evaporate and they don't ever really even know that they were there because it's just so automatic. I'm guessing already you're thinking, can I do this? Should I do this? Is this craziness? I'm guessing that you are feeling deeply about this conversation, pro or con, as we talk about rethinking social media. Regardless, I would encourage you to be sharing this episode widely and engage in conversations with your friends and family about the very things that Greg and I are chatting with today. Now back to the episode. It's interesting. Uh, you're actually hitting on some themes. Dr. Bo Johnson, my best friend, and I just finished a book on Christmas morning entitled Be Fully Present. The subtitle is Reject Fear, Reduce Distraction, and Live in the Here and Now. That middle phrase, reduce distraction, we talk about that in the book. In this ongoing interactive conversation between Bo and myself, he actually talks, there's an entire section there, and you're going to read it because you're going to actually design the book. Um, but the book design obviously is going to flow out of this idea of what does it mean to be fully present? He talks a lot about the phone, being an intruder, being in an unhealthy relationship with us, being um, interrupting, uh, being codependent. And then he actually talks about, Bo gives a strategy, it's ironic that you, you mention it, where he now is scheduling scrolling time. Because if he doesn't, as we all do, and you just hinted to it, we're going to be scrolling, you know, a lot. I was actually uh, spe speaking to a team. I will say not what team, and I will not say where that team is, but I was actually talking to a team, uh, an athletic team, a sports team, about the 168 hours a week that we all have and how we have far more time than we think we do. One of these athletes actually challenged me in the middle of my presentation and my conversation with this team saying, no, but actually our team and our athletes and our particular sport, we actually don't have any time that our time really, we, we are maxing 168 hours a week in light of all the demands of our lives. Well, long story short, the assistant coach got up, we were talking about screen time and social media and so forth. That same athlete, when the coach actually said, you can actually see how much screen time you're spending every day which again is a lot, but even more than that, you can actually look at specifically what apps are happening and what you're looking at on, on, on a daily basis to which the team started kind of scrolling and kind of figuring out how much time they spent. All of a sudden that same challenging athlete kind of gasped huh, out loud and said, Oh my goodness. I stand corrected. Two Jeez. hours, three hours, four hours. No, no, no. 17 <laughs> hours that week on TikTok. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but she had no idea. Right. And to throw it in the, I had no idea. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about, I had no idea in a minute because I don't blame people. Um, I'll, I'll get to that, but to talk about hours and minutes. Um, yeah, it's for, for most teens, twenties, even thirties. And it's not really a generational thing. You go out to eat, you're going to see two 70 year olds sitting on a date, both of them looking at their phone. It's not a, these kids these days kind of thing. It's really a universal thing. Um, yeah, usually something in the in the realm of two to four hours. I think when we're having these conversations, the the, the stats change, the percentages change, the, the money figures change. But if it's half of that, if it's double that, I don't really think it is, has a huge material difference. So if I quote you three hours and it's actually one and a half or it might be six, it's kind of like the math doesn't change uh, how still profound. Yeah, that yeah. is. And if you really actually multiply it out, it, it's years, it's years of your life. Um, the, and the thing is you have to invest that time somewhere. Right. And so, um, 
a few other little strategies and we'll probably get into more of these later is, you know, put, put your Facebook app, put your TikTok app, not in a folder on your phone called friends or connections, but put it next to the games or put it next to your financial apps, because that's what it is. You have to look at it as an investment of your time and it's costing you something. And you might do the math and say, yeah, and I, and I actually am OK with the cost because I'm learning about this and I'm connecting with these people. Obviously, people wouldn't be on social media if it didn't benefit them. Right. There is something that is, you're, you're getting back from the experience. It's not all bad or else it wouldn't be a successful product. Um, back to what I was saying before, though, I don't blame people because you are, I, I like to think of it as you're up against a thousand of the smartest designers and developers in the world. And they have one job. It's, it's a thousand against one. So it's Michael against this army of people who went to school for it, who have honed their craft. They're the best of the best. And they've been hired to get you to look at your phone. That's the game. Mm -hmm. And every pixel, every animation, every moment, every notification is engineered to get you to look at your phone. And I think the nuance of it comes from the fact that, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when Facebook was in its infancy and this was all kind of new and exciting, uh, the, there was no game. It was like, it was like a clubhouse. You get to join it with all your friends, share your photos, tag each other. And in its infancy, it was kind of what you see is what you get. Um, but with all of these products, inevitably, uh, they have to make money at some point. And this isn't like conspiracy theory, Greg. This is like, how does Facebook make billions of dollars? Like it does somehow, right? But you've never swiped your credit card and signed up like you do for Netflix or anything else. You're not, you're not paying $19 a month to use Facebook. So if it doesn't cost you anything, then how does it work? And without, you know, insulting anyone's intelligence, like it's amazing how few people understand the money side and where, how it all kind of fits together and the, the role they're playing in the equation. So um, I don't even remember a number of years ago, Facebook was kind of on trial in front of the world. Do you uh -huh. remember this? Of course. Um, and the, the one highlight that sticks out to me is the, the senator who kind of thought he had Mark Zuckerberg up against the wall and was kind of like, well, then how do you make money? And Mark was like, we, we sell advertisement like, do you really not understand like how this works? But like, so people, so few people do. Um, so anyway, the, the, the number of hours that are being spent really is a product of it's entertaining. It's enjoyable. It's fun. There's a, there's a rush. There's a mm -hmm. little hip of little hit of dopamine that goes off in your brain when you see the thing, when you like the thing and when you hate the thing. And that's another piece of the puzzle. Um, Facebook isn't trying to show you things that you like or things that are good for you. They're trying to show you things that you're going to look at. And that's kind of a, an insidious piece is that the algorithm is really optimized for your eyeballs and your fingers to touch the screen. So if it's something really polarizing, if it's something really negative, if it's something really hateful, but it gets a reaction out of you, guess what? They get a couple more cents. And it's literally a game of pennies, four cents for that interaction, you unfollowed this person, you un liked this person, anything you do, it's just more traffic, more eyeballs, more attention, um, which I think is the really, the, the sticky part of it. Um, Bo, you know, saying he's going to scheduling scrolling time is funny to me. Um, and personally, my, my strategy was maybe a little more of the nuclear option. Um, but I would recommend people really step all the way back, at least for a season and see what it does. I've had so many conversations with mm. people, Greg, I'm so anxious. I can't sleep. I can't, so what, what do you look at all day? What's going into your mind? You know, and I believe that we were designed as people to love a somewhat small, tight knit community of people really well. Mm. Instead of try to love a thousand or 10,000 or a million people as, adequ as adequately as we can through these micro interactions, which are truly meaningless at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, so I do, I, I look at my mind as almost like a, a bookshelf or a shelf that I can put things on and I can take things off of. Um, and I think social media is just such a constant stream of information, products, sentiments, ideas, ideologies 
there's so much going in and do I need to care about that? Is this even true? Is this good? I need to get, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. it's just so much. It's so um, much. And I don't think we were designed to be able to even process it all. You know, it's interesting, you know, both of my sons who actually sat here in the studio, Logan and Justin, and, and engaged in a conversation. I wasn't even present on three words. Uh, their three words were re- reduce screen time. Yeah. And, and, it, and it was because of some of the things you're saying, but you're, you're saying, no, no, no. It's not just reducing it. Yeah. It's actually going all the way as far as you can to actually tap into who you want to become and choices that flow out of your values. And we've, we, I'm looking forward to hearing more about that, but you know, it was a great conversation, but in many ways, this takes it the next step to literally rethink your relationship with social media, to rethink your relationship with your phone. Um, and again, if I may, you said, even before we entered into the conversation, you said, feel free to poke holes in the things I'm saying. And I'm going, okay, I'm not seeing any holes yet. I'm feeling pretty inspired and compelled to really rethink my social media um, involvement. So tell me more. Yeah. So, um, you know, my, my background as a web developer is, is an interesting context for all of this. And you'll, you'll find there's no, there's no shortage of other anecdotes of people much higher up and, and deeper into the world of technology, you know, people that used to work at Google, people that were in Facebook early who, who don't let their children use social media, right? It's, it's the whole, I, I know how this works. I know what the, the plan is and what the strategy is and it's not good, right? Um, you mentioned I've got three daughters and a huge part of my my taking a step back from technology was to try to model what it could look like to be a person who lives in the real world and has friends and is somewhat relevant and isn't glued to, to their phone. Um, you know, your children, as you're modeling behavior for them, they're just going to do what they see you doing. They're going to see that's a normal thing to do. That's a good thing to do. And they're going to, they're going to follow you know, in your, in your footsteps. So some, some of my decision was around that. What would it look for my, what would it look like for my kids to not really have any memories of their dad face lit up with that white glow from the cell phone, you know, as he's sitting there at night, but, but attending to, to them, um, making eye contact with them. I know being present is really what you're all about and what almost all of your curriculum and teaching points back to is this idea that, the greatest gift that you could give a person is your own presence, you know, in that moment. But I can say that and at the same time, it's been way too much on my phone. So my, my values are that. And yet my practices are in contradiction to my values. So even if you schedule scrolling time, I would argue that scrolling from four to five o'clock affects five to six o'clock. And I think that's one of the hidden pieces of the puzzle that, It's like, well, I can, you know, it's like, it's, it's not as if I'm saying, take this nice hobby and never do it again. And then someone's saying, well, what if I just did it a little bit, right? Like everything in moderation is kind of the argument that, that I would probably have made five years ago. If you asked me about social media and my tune has changed only because, um, I think you could again, be investing time in that world of social media, filling your mind, that bookshelf with clutter and ideas. And there's stress about this. There's anxiety about this. There's jealousy about this. There's excitement about that. And at the end of the day, you actually don't care about any of it. And and you don't remember any of it a -hmm. week later in the moment. It's the most exciting thing. And can you believe that this happened and that went viral and this happened a year later, two years later, you literally have no recollection of it because there's no actual weight. There's no meaning, you, you know, in it. So for, for me and my experiment with decreasing my, you know, technology use in general as much as possible, it actually has less to do with those hours that I would have spent, which is, I think, important. It has more to do with the hours outside of that and the domino effect and the actual mm-hmm. multiplication of some of that rest and some of that peace. Not only are you not experiencing it in that moment, but it bleeds into every other inter- interaction that you have. I'm just weirdly not thinking about as many things as most people are thinking about. I'm not aware of many things that that people are are aware of. Um, Have you heard of Timu? Mm. Okay. Timu is like the new Amazon, I guess. Okay. It's like everywhere and everyone, and like 
heard about it yesterday, you know, and it's like in, in the world of being digital and writing code and building websites, it's just funny to be, to feel somewhat out, out of the loop, but I really love it. You've heard the fear of missing out, right? FOMO, hashtag FOMO. I call it JOMO, the joy of missing out. <laughs> and it's like the, the, the restful mm. feeling of, of not being involved with things that really aren't your business in a way. That don't matter. That don't matter. I mean, you know, people matter and stories matter. And that picture of the kid and the story about the, the miraculous healing from cancer, like those things matter. Don't get me wrong. Um, but when we, when we experience them in this mediated way through that rectangular screen, we kind of rob them of the fact that they matter because we aren't really invested and we don't really care. We click like, you know, that someone didn't die of cancer. Hey, I like that. It's like, it's just kind of funny. It's like, if these things really do matter, then we're, we're not paying them enough, you know, honor and gravity. And if they don't matter, then why are we looking at them? Right. So things can kind of fall into, into both, into both buckets. So my friend, you have experienced in, in your own, you know, words, uh, transformation in, in a variety of ways. And you've highlighted some of those. Um, but I don't think you're just offering for us to rethink things. I think you, if you had your druthers and you had your ability to say, and I'm going to give you the final word here. And you've said so many great things worth pondering and reflecting upon and, and just musing upon and considering I, I'm, I'm feeling, uh, convicted and I'm feeling like, what does this mean for me? I'm hoping our listeners are feeling the same way. Um, are you really suggesting just to rethink it? It seems like you're, you, there's something stronger than there even than that. And I'll give you the final word. And, and obviously we're inviting people into conversations, your opinion, your views, and would love to just kind of have you wrap up the conversation now with what you would want to say to us. Yeah. So I've had, I've had so many miniature counseling conversations with friends over the years, starting even a decade ago where people are you know, I'm using Facebook too much. I'm on, you know, and I say Facebook, which dates me already. Like no one, right, is on Facebook. And that's because I haven't touched social media since people used Facebook, TikTok, X, any, any of it. Like most people know and feel in their heart, I, I'm doing this too much. Like I don't think there's, I think when people see, they are, they're kind of ignorant to it or maybe they're not using it and, and this just isn't for them, but most people kind of know this is just something I'm doing almost compulsively. And I, there's a lot of addiction language that, that, that fits right into this conversation about I'm trying to block out time and kind of constrain this behavior and lock it down. And obviously there's so many tools and we didn't even get into, you can make your smartphone into a dumb phone, right? People talk about turning off the color and making your phone grayscale. Have you heard of people no, doing I this? So it's like a setting that you can go and it's meant for accessibility and contrast for people maybe that are colorblind or need, you know, more contrast on the screen. People kind of hack it and say, if I turn off the color on my screen, everything's a little duller. Everything's a little less attractive. Instagram isn't really very fun to scroll through because my phone now is black and white, like it's, you know, the 1960s. So now I'm going to use it less, right? There's all these little hacks that people do. I've done that. You can delete a lot of apps from your phone or you can almost uh, parental settings yourself. You're the child in the scenario and the parent. You turn off, you make screen time and you make rules. Like if you actually zoom out and look at what you're doing when you play all those games is you're, you're taking a shiny object and you're trying to make it less shiny so that you play with it a little less. I would say walk away. I would say delete your social media accounts completely and see how it feels. And, and guess what? They'll be there. And if your life falls apart and you find yourself depressed and anxious because you don't have social media anymore, get back on, I guess. But, but do an experiment like I did and see, you have to do it all the way. I think is the thing is a lot of these half measures, mm. they basically leave you in the same place. So my recommendation would be go all in for a month, for two months, for three months mm. and see if you come out, if you do it for a day, nothing, nothing changes. You're, 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 you're right there. I mean, we've all gone on vacation. We've all turned our phone off for a day or done some sort of detox. 
give it, give it 60 days, give it a really good chunk of time and see if you don't come out better than when you went in. I would say 90. And the reason is 21 days to a habit, 90 days to a lifestyle. So, right. if you're, I, you know, I think 21 days, probably after 21 days, you're probably not reaching your pocket all the time. Right. Um, like you described, even in the store and when you're driving, but 90 days, maybe I, again, I, boy, should I do that? Can I do that? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> I've had this conversation with so many people and they always say the same thing. But I just said, <laughs> they say, I would do that. Oh, I would love to do that. Except mm-hmm. and a lot of times that's with a smartphone. I'll give you that. But I'm a, I'm a web developer. I, I build websites that people use on phones. They have millions of users. Like if I can do it, any, anyone can do it. I mean, if you're a social media like guru or you're a social media like marketing professional, then you probably can't do this. But I would say everyone else can. Uh, I would say that leaving social media is costly and staying on social media is even more costly. Oh, here we go. Back to our episode, choose your hard. Yep. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite conversations, because again, both are hard. Right. You're describing both hard. And the question is, what is the cost and what are you willing to pay? And there's like costs it. that my, my technology choices have for other people, including you. No. Greg, did you see that social media post? And you're like, I'm not on social media. <laughs> Justin yeah. sent me the schedule for tonight, when to show up. And it, and it was a picture and I pull it up on my phone and I had to text him back and say, can you just type out the time that I'm supposed to be there? <laughs> and he's LOL. Yeah, sure. You know, eight o'clock. What it's like, I, and, and that's not lost on me. You know, I understand that there are certain relationships that I had that were more social media, more smartphone oriented and that maybe they've diminished. I'm okay with that hmm. because what I've gained is, is, is just far greater. Well, Greg, I don't know why we don't have you in the studio more often. Maybe because you say no, because you always have great boundaries with me and with everything else, including your phone and social media. But I would love to have you back and continue our conversations because you have so much insight and wealth. And it's a, obviously a joy to have built this thing called DMB Coaching uh, with you uh, from the very, very beginning. So thanks so much for the, the deep, convicting, powerful insights today. Thanks, Michael. Always happy to be here. I mean this sincerely when I say it, but we really do appreciate you as our Three Words Podcast family. Uh, We enjoy our relationship with you and would love to go deeper with you. Would you do me a favor, uh, and not only a favor for me, but a favor for yourself, and that's to go to dmbcoaching.com slash subscribe and sign up for our monthly newsletter. We'd love to continue to have more conversations with you, offering you new curriculum, new ideas, new insights that maybe you won't hear on Three Words Podcast. Um, So yeah dmbcoaching.com slash subscribe. And in the meantime, again, thank you. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks.